Hey guys, this is Ian Fernando. Um, I have one of my very good friends on this uh, amazing podcast uh, and video interview we're going to do. He just recently just finished uh, ABS, which is a virtual uh, affiliate virtual summit, um, and which has made me surprisingly super busy this past week just because he had such a great response and a lot of people enjoy the content that instead of trying to talk from person to person like you usually do at a conference, people are just messaging me through Instagram, emailing, finding my Facebook and all that. So I want to break down his success on this virtual summit. Where do you think this virtual summit is going to go within this COVID-19 uh, scenario? Will it be the next future of going virtual and actually paying for a actual place um, and all that? So um, Aki, go ahead and uh, introduce yourself and let's go ahead and start chatting. Hey guys, so uh, Aki, definitely good to be on the show. Ian, long friend, we met uh, at the Fair Wars Conference, I think, a couple of years ago, four years ago, five years ago. Yeah, but I think we met first time in uh, in Amsterdam for sure, though. Uh, uh, it could be Amsterdam. Uh, yeah. Uh, probably spoke to Jay or something. One of those, like, uh, SDM meetups or as similar meetups. Yeah. Could be. The good old days, yeah, man. Um, so I'm Aki, founder of Affiliate Business Club, uh, founder of Affiliate Business Club. Three years ago, uh, before I tried all kinds of stuff, I actually started off my journey with SEO back in 2011. I uh, had this guy called JP from my hometown, who, I, who I'm still thankful for, for introducing me to the online space. Uh, I was very down back then. My mother had breast cancer. I think we had a way out. I had just recently sold uh, an uh, advertising, I mean, like a, an agency I have with artist agency. And... Back then, I really had an eye for advertising. And this guy, I told him, like, hey, man, I was already busy with a lot of connections, club events, and DJs, and I was taking care of my mom for about a year. And at that moment, he's like, hey, man, you've always asked me questions. Why don't you get started? I was like, it's it's a good time to get started right now. I'm sitting at home doing nothing. So actually, he taught me a lot of stuff. So said, hey, why don't you just start off with SEO? It's It's so much easier with SEO than putting money in advertising and you just learn along the way. You build up a list first. I was like, okay, that's uh, whatever you tell me after you, I'll just, I'll just go that way, you know, because I was like clueless. I was sitting at home being down. Yeah, uh, and that, that's that, awesome mentality for sure. And that's awesome that he got you started in there. I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll disagree yeah. a little bit with just the SEO side. I think paid is so much faster and easier because you're investing so much time in SEO, but it's such a... I mean, you gotta find, find, uh, fight your battles. Like, do you want to waste time, you know, or do you want to spend more time, right? So yeah, yeah, it, it was, it was. I was debating kind of like about that also, but I don't. I just felt like, hey, SEO is super safe for me to start because when you're starting out, I think everyone, if you do, doesn't matter if money or not, you're kind of afraid to put up your first ad, right? Because you basically know you're gonna lose money. Because I was like, let me just learn a little bit of code and WordPress, how to build a website and. Mm. I worked from that, like go, go, dive, move, and, and dive deep, a little bit more deep into that. I was like, hey, SEO is a perfect way. So, anyway, I started off with SEO uh, sooner, uh, soon after, decided to launch a, a soccer website called Football's Live. And me and my best friend, Seth Siddiqui, was also on the show. Uh, we built this soccer, or so before Instagram, and we, we built a script where we took pictures of people, of uh, soccer players, in uh, Twitter, I mean, and, and put it on our website. So you can kind of like get like real life information of the footballers life behind, like uh, behind the scenes after when, when they leave the soccer pitch. And it, it worked out super well, man. We had like the whole National Dutch squad posting it, like we were all buddies with them. And we're just like, hey, tweet this website and whatever. And at one moment, we, we had like tons of followers. We So it was the first time we... We, before like influencers became big or something, we were like, hey, this, we need to use famous people, right, to, to Twitter our stuff. And uh, yeah, that, that's actually from then, I, I started to move more into paid advertising. And then someone told me about affiliate marketing. It's like, hey, you should put these bands on your, on your soccer website and you can make like a couple percent of each sale. And I didn't know like CPA, CPA game we know today, but it was the first time I was like, oh, fuck, you can make like 6% of selling a soccer shoe, you know, and it wasn't big money, but I was just like, it was more like to get into the idea of like, hey man, you can make money by promoting someone else's product. And uh, yeah, man, about two years later, so we talked about in 2013, I was like, hey man, uh, I, we kind of like got into that little, little fight and we're like, hey, we want to save our friendship. 
let's just put this all uh, put this whole project away. So we save our friendship. We had definitely made some good money, uh, and we like hey, let's just go our separate ways, you know. And, and we're still best buddies as of today, and we learned so much. And I think it's the best decision we both made because he moved more into fashion because it was his background, and I stayed into all that marketing industry. And uh, that's when I started to learn about more apps and I want to get more about performance marketing. I was like, hey, app store optimization, moved into app store optimization. But the whole course around it didn't do much sales. That was thought of, I was like, I need to be boo, you know, to be like <laughs> app store optimization. Yeah. Um, that's, that's good. Uh, I mean, I've had issues too with friends and partners in the past. And that, that definitely is something difficult to uh, walk a fine line with. You know what I mean? So because you don't want to break that friendship, but then you also have to think about business at the same time. So that's that's good that you guys broke it off, understood the value of friendship versus cash flow. I think that's definitely way way more important for sure. You know, yeah, I think everyone everyone when they're young, like I'm 31 now, though I think between 20s and the entrepreneurs, you do stuff with friends. You 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 both are so hungry, you know, and you both want to get so much. That, and I've seen it going wrong in the past. So we just said from the start, it's not about money. Even I have a background, like it's not about money. It's not about, it, it, you know, it, it's all about the connections and the, the, the connections you build up. I think it's, in the end, so much more valuable. And you don't want to lose a friendship. And we were talking about a couple thousand euros back then. You know, it was a lot of money for us. Yeah. We made five, made five grand or whatever. But it's, it's, it's in the end, it's bullshit. Uh, it, and uh, if you look at now, we were still like, we're like this, you know, and, We've been friends for now 16 years. What you're gonna be like lose a friendship for a couple thousand euros? Yeah, yeah exactly. You know, but that's that's definitely a solid decision that's made. But but uh, yeah, let's fast fast forward. Uh, man, moved more into affiliate marketing. Got uh, got to know a lot of people within the industry. Uh, I'm still build up my media buying company. Had a small team here in Amsterdam, also Ukraine. Uh, some partners there also. And I just, I just, I just thought like, hey man, we were traveling. I was traveling to many different conferences, so not only the affiliate world conference, also the affiliate summit, and also the European summit and ABN, yeah, so like different verticals, and just trying to broaden my scope. And I kind of like missed this concept with what I created with ABC is that you had like one third party organizer around all conferences. So if if you are going to all these conferences, you have like a place where which is like your safe haven around all the cars and you can all bring your friends and everyone would bring their own friends honestly and you could have a place to network and this is actually how it sort of as, as I wouldn't say as a joke but I remember a few world conferences it was now three years ago four years ago sorry uh 2016 the first time I was like hey man let's just get get together with a small group of people I think we were on like 40 50 people back then you know and then the March 2017 or January 2017, I, I said, okay, like, hey, someone said, you need to build, you need to make a brand, brand it. It's called like a feeling something. I like, do I, we can just be like buddies all together. It's like, no, I'll put it a brand and there's companies that want to sponsor. I was like, okay, yeah, let's just do it, you know? Mm-hmm. And then I remember organizing in March 2017, the first big one in Amsterdam. I even paid a couple grand out of my own pocket because I was having fun. I was like, oh, the bar and revenue, we need to give people free drinks. I'm like, yeah, fucking shit, you know, let's oh, just go. Man, I'm definitely like that too, man. <laughs> like, yeah, let's go. I'm having fun. You're having fun. Let's, let's just. And <laughs> hey, you know how I am. That's the party. You know? so I was like, yeah. oh, fucking yeah, let's get free drinks. So actually, I lost, I think, like two, three grand on the first event. Uh, but I didn't really mind because I was having so much fun. And I had my media buying company back then. I was like, it works well together. I'm buying. I'm, I'm, I'm building good connections, which I can do the media buying for. And uh, like at one point, I interviewed. I just, I just saw so much potential. And I liked it. You know how I am. We're just talking about it. Like you know, I'm an extrovert person. I love connecting people with each other. You and me are the same. Like, like we love, we love, we love having fun. But we love to see people enjoy and like build connections. You know. And yeah, I, I, I the same thing. I need to. Like for me, for my network, I need to make sure like, oh, your vibe has to match mine and I don't mind putting the money up front because later on it's going to come back to me anyway. So uh, it's just like having that mentality of, okay, I'm going to network with these people. I know they're going to be solid people anyway. Let's just put it up. And being an extrovert person is super solid just because you network so much faster, I think, you know, and you just are just open to putting yourself out there without a notion of, Oh, he's gonna say no, or or a failure of a rejection, you know, and that doesn't really bother us technically. 
You know what I mean? So. Yeah, it's, it's exactly this part. Like, you the same. Like, me, we've been rejected. We felt like shit. We've made mistakes hundreds of times. We've I've, I've even had, like, some soft sponsors now, which 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 felt like the, the event was well enough or I fucked up. It's it's normal. It's human, you know. And it's life, you know. It's it is life. And I I just I just have I learned this thing a long time ago where if, if you just fuck up, you have to obviously agree that you fucked up and don't go against it. But try and and not spend too much energy about the fuck up. Just agree. Try so like let's like, uh, solve the problem come up with a solution and agree to the solution with with the person who felt fucked up or something and i think this is one of the best learning lessons in, in entrepreneurial lives because every entrepreneur makes mistakes how do you come over your mistake as fast as possible you know first yeah. admit to mistake come up with a solution and agree like to the problem solving and, and from both parties agree and then there's no point of of thinking like a week or two weeks i'll just come like straight up I even like recently went to this company. Uh, I just went to their office like, hey, man, I'm sorry, I fucked up. How can we make this right? What do you feel uh, like comfortable with making this right? And obviously, I have a I have a solution, but I want to make sure we're on the same level and I, that my solution isn't like like making them feel bad or it's not enough, you know? So when, when, I, when you know what they expect from it, then it's it's so much better to, to, to work towards the solution. Anyway, uh, fast forward again. Uh, ABC, uh, a lot of meetups worldwide. We've done about 40 meetups, 45 meetups in the past three years. Obviously, with COVID-19, uh, this year actually we were supposed to do 20 meetups in 16 countries wow. uh, within within 12 months. So it, it's a lot, you know. And obviously, we, we had the team prepared well enough. Uh, so everything is like automated. We we know directly everything what needs to be done when an event takes place so everyone in the team has their own responsibilities i just want to go to the event talk to people i don't want to be putting up the banners anymore or putting the bottles i used to love it because i just love doing it whatever and now it's like hey i want to focus on building the connection for the sponsors for the people because i want them to come back not once not twice but whenever they're in the industry i want them to come back you know i think that's that's my main goal i don't want a sponsor to sponsor one time or two times five times I want them to sponsor as many times as possible because they, they need to see the value. And obviously I had sponsors which just did it one time and didn't come back and, and had some sponsors just for a couple of times or just around some verticals. But for the audience, it's easier. And you need to have the right people and the right companies in for the audience. And to have a whole mix with CEOs up into affiliate managers, that's I think that's the perfect way of combining because you bring in so many different people, whereas there's something for everyone. And eventually the right people will find each other. Oh, yeah. And since, since, since this, obviously since COVID-19, since lockdown, I had already made a very small event in the European summit in Cascais uh, in, in February, end of February. And I was like, hmm, I was already seeing so many people canceling. You know, last year we had like 500 people there. This year I only had like three or four hundred four people applying. I was like, hmm, maybe the show isn't as big, you know? Uh, and then I just decided, like, with the team, like, in the beginning of March, like, hey, man, um, let's maybe we should move more into virtual stuff. Like, we had already wanted to do a virtual summit last year, so the turnaround for us was, was super fast because we had everything prepared. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, like, from the day we started building the website, actually, I think if you look at that domain, the was domain tools, we just registered the domain, like, 50 days ago or something, right? Like, that's crazy. That's how, that's, I mean, that's what I want to get into, like, like you saw something and then like in the beginning of March, you decided like, hey, let's just dive into this. We have somewhat of a platform, right? And let's just make these virtual summits. Like let's go through the step of the process of like, how, why did you think it was necessary for, uh, or why, how did you visualize this virtual summit, you know, coming into this COVID-19 scenario where it was just kind of the beginning, I guess, or towards the end of the pandemic issue, you know? So... Let's see how you, get, uh, it's, talk about how you got into it. Uh, so actually, since I was already telling the team, in February, in February, I was in London. And in London, you had this, I saw something on the news with my best buddy. And I was like, hey, man, this COVID is, it's, it's getting pretty serious. But should we take it serious? Is it like, does our, as the media is trying to scare us, you know, because you, you know how the media works, right? It's like, we know, as, we know better than anyone else. You're just trying to push stuff to someone, you know? We are the media, technically. <laughs> it's true. So I was like, 
is the media starting to scare us? But there weren't, there weren't, there was nothing in, in Amsterdam and all the environment based. And I was like, man, I was just rethinking. It. And then he's like, you know what? Maybe we should think about like a, a plan B for our strategies because he, he travels a lot. I travel a lot. And uh, we, we, he's like, man, we should find a new way of distributing. Like he has uh, his own clothing brand to issue what he's done. And he also talked about it. I was like, man, you should definitely find online resources and not stores, because stores, if it's going to go down with COVID, you're going to be fucked also. It's like, yeah, you with your events also. I'm like, yeah, man. Uh, maybe it's a good time to to do the virtual summit, what I had been planning to do. And he's like, yeah, we should. And yeah, we, we didn't really dive into the month of February when I came back. And then the, the, the European summit, that summit was very small. It was good in audience, I heard, but I didn't even travel myself for the first time in, in a long time. I didn't go to my own events. I was like, it's not maybe worth it. Um, actually, I was also sick back then. And I was like, uh, I'm not going to risk it. I'm already sick. I'm, should I travel? I'm like, you know what? It's a small event. Someone else can take care of it down there. And it's only going to be like 200 people anyway, or 100, 200 people. And it's going to be fine. And we've done it so many times. Like, okay. And when the, the, the girl was there at the event, like, okay, actually, the whole show is a little bit, you know, uh, the event itself was also not, not the best event we had with ABC. Sponsors weren't so happy. Uh, maybe we should move more into the virtual events right now. I was like, okay, we, let's, let's, let's talk about it. So for the next Monday, we had like a team meeting, but we always have a Monday morning call. I said, hey, guys, how, how are we in the process? How ready we store all that? All the text we had, like we, we had prepared everything, bro. Like the email sequence, the whole text, like everything was already stored somewhere, you know. And the whole copywriting, uh, the whole layout. So we were just like, okay, how fast can we do the turnaround? And then we we're still debating how we're going to, are we going to continue with the events? I said, okay, you know what? Let's just think about all the couple of days. Uh, everyone's going to inform with everyone who knows in the industry, and from there we're just gonna. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna decide. Obviously, we're gonna do the events less, but we're gonna decide how fast we can turn around this virtual summit because we already had like in our mind we're gonna do this, but how fast? And yeah, I can say like uh, I, we were kind of like I wouldn't say afraid, but like obviously you have all the big conferences. I heard somewhere debating to postpone. We have very good relations with all the big conferences, so we didn't wanna um, fuck up the relationship with them or the student from a language. But like we didn't wanna screw up the relationship and be like. Hey guys, uh, F you all, we're gonna do virtual summits, you know? And because uh, obviously I value the relationships and we, we've built very good relationships with everyone, like from the top people in the organization of the summit. So I didn't want to fuck up all these relationships. And I was like, hey, uh, I just wanted to check what they're gonna do. Are they gonna postpone or they're gonna do virtual summits? If they're gonna do what type? Are they gonna move more around uh, networking? Are they gonna focus on about content? And no one had really decided. And I was like, I'm not going to wait for someone to decide what they're going to do. So the team said, hey, man, uh, the ideal situation is 60 to 90 days for a virtual summit. That's the most ideal situation. Then you have everything in spot. We have more than enough time to have like the, the turnaround with the advertising and everything. And I said, no, we need to be the first. We need to be the first to market. We need to be the first movers. We need to do it in half the time. It's like 30 days. I was like 30 to 45 days. If you say 60 to 90 we need to do 30 to 45 days. We need to, and everyone in the team was like, Aki, is that possible? So I was like, yeah. I know it's not possible. <laughs> I know it's not possible, but we're gonna work, like we're gonna grind. We, we're gonna cancel all the events. No one's gonna do anything else. We just, everyone's gonna move their, all of their energy and their time on taking, on making sure we're gonna launch this virtual summit. Yeah, that's, that's and, crazy. You did it in like 45 days, you said, 30 days? Actually, the, no, we, the, the first day of the summit was 40 days. So the last day was 45. Damn. So if we're talking now, now it's 40. I, I just said, I, I didn't even come out. I was like half the time. I just said half the time. And I was like, I'm, I'm like, it just like, it was like an impulse. Half the time. Is it possible half the time? Like, I know, but actually we, we did show everyone that it's about, like the whole team, like we were like making like, we had like a whole calendar. They won this, they do this, they do. And then at one time we were behind a schedule with recordings and with interviewing and with social media. We had to hire people. So it's, it's crazy, you know, like we, we had to hire 60 people in this long time. Like it's, That's it's, and it is. And, and now looking back, like with my partner Roman on this, the other host, uh, man, we, we were just talking about yesterday. Yesterday was the first day off since lockdown. We didn't do anything. Like I actually I didn't even message him more than, bro, I'm super proud of the team. 
I'm just gonna chill today. Like, and my girls was like, yeah, you need this gift to Anthony. I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay, you know, let's just chill. <laughs> but like, I, I do really think it's gonna move more virtual. I, I really also think that, like, we're not trying to replace conferences, you know? Yeah. I think the, 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 the best thing about this industry, and you know it, and I know it, and everyone in the industry knows it who has been to a conference, the best thing about this industry is a conference. The vibe, the energy, the contacts you make, the content, everything together. I think like Affiliate Summit has done a very good job. It's one of our first summit I went to. Yeah. SCM guys with every World Conference, they took things to the next level. They've changed my life. They've changed hundreds of maybe thousands of people's lives. And I think we should all be thankful for everyone who's organizing summits. But I, the, our goal is like, hey, we're a small team. We can turn around very quick. Uh, I think like bigger organizations have a hard time with. With their with the turnaround in deciding if they're gonna do if they're gonna go left or right, for example, and we're just like, okay, yeah, fuck left, we're just gonna go right, you know, because yeah. we we we're a small team. We can I, like like now. I just said to the guys, hey man, we're gonna do this. We, we're not gonna do events. We're just gonna do virtual events. We get to have everyone shift everyone in the right mind shift. So it was quite quite hard the first week, two weeks. Yeah, of course. Because um, because people are like oh, I'm locked at home now and. Uh, people don't have screens. They have children at home, obviously, and it, it's it's hard, right? And like I, I don't have child, I don't have children. I just have my fiance here, and, and we build a good good up home office. So we're just busy. We love we love spending more time together. But for other people, I'm sure they love spending more time together also. But it's hard for them to with with all the circumstances around. Right? Yeah, some people I, just need some uh, some break. You know, I mean, from just their household daily routine. You know, I mean, like from their kids or or whatnot. That's why some parents they look forward to like. The kids going to school and then then they miss them so then they look forward to for them to come back right so it is getting a little difficult for a lot of families for sure to have this uh anti non-separation anxiety i guess you know what i mean where they look forward to not seeing their kids or their spouse or whatever for just an hour or two right because they're stuck in lockdown but that's the scenario we're in you know but it's just adjusting to everything right but that's great that you got your team to switch that mindset it's definitely hard um and you were definitely the first to market i think there was one conference i was just talking to um you, i don't know if you know darren blatt right yeah yeah he just had a conference as well and his was super super technical where it had virtual booth virtual parties um and, and all that things right so let's go into the breakdown like what format uh why did you decide on just this specific format of like a video webinar style where there's no booths, there's no um, virtual parties, you know, and all that. Uh, I, I have to think about it because as I said before, I love to party. But, uh, <laughs> uh, it's, 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 I think you're, uh, you're complicating things and, and it, it's good to, to try and make things simple, simple for yourself, simple for your audience, for the sponsors, for everyone who attends. Uh, and, and I can say we, we learned so much last week. We still made a lot of mistakes. Like, cause, cause we, we just at one moment decided, Hey, let's just focus on the speakers. Let's just focus on good content and let's have sponsors, uh, companies sponsor the event, obviously, uh, and, and, and give them a platform or a space where they can get in touch with affiliates also. So actually then it's like, uh, like he, it's like for, for both. Let's say for both audiences, it's going to be interesting and very easy going. I can definitely say there is, there's a lot of room for improvement in engagement. Uh, uh, we were expecting a little bit more engagement uh, when we created Telegram group, for example, and it helped out a lot. We were expecting people to go nuts underneath like the videos with comments. And in one video, we had like 800 views and not even one comment. I was like, what the fuck's wrong? You know, what's wrong with this people? There's 800 people watching. Yeah, I know. And, and, yeah, it's crazy because I, I get the same issue on like some of my live stuff. Like there'd be like hundreds of people watching and like two comments. But it, I think it's just the market. Like uh, I've, I've recognized that a bunch of people that actually follow me are just super noob, right? Super new. Uh, they'd rather, they're embarrassed to ask the simple questions, right? Which they shouldn't be embarrassed to, to ask. But that's part of the late learning phase. Like some people that are in their 20s, might not be embarrassed to ask simple questions, but somebody in their 30s and 40s might be embarrassed to ask the most simplest of questions. All right, so that's that is the thing. You know? So, but yeah, like that format that you have, the webinar, 
live style. Um, well, it was it was basically pre recorded, right? And, yeah, it's 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 uh, and definitely we also heard that that we have to we, we we're going to change a lot of things for next time. We're also going to do more networking. We had some sponsors. Just wanted to get in touch with people. Uh, the pre-recordings definitely worked out well and just set up a whole program. But the pre-recording is is it, it's very up to date. It's not like it's a pre-recording from two months ago. So everything was done up until actually some were even done during the summit. So actually, for example, Nick Shackford. Uh, did, did, I did it on Wednesday, and we he was we had some technical issues, but it was supposed to go live on Wednesday. He said, "I want people to show the stuff with the date of today," you know. So, uh, it, which is really cool. So people are are really in the heat of the moment, seeing it's stuff what's working right now, because uh, something from a month before can also be outdated. I wouldn't say, um, especially in this industry, you're definitely right. Yeah. So that's why we, we me and Roman and me, were just like, hey, we should only plan everything maximum a week before. Because otherwise, it, it's going to make things easy for us. Don't get me wrong, to like two months before or whatever, just put it online. But we don't want to be coming with updated stuff. And again, I value, say with the events, we, what, what the same mindset is, we want everyone who's coming to the event, so the same with the offline event to this online event, to be getting something out of it. So it doesn't matter who's coming. So that's why we, we start off with a very new day. What is an affiliate network? What's an advertising network? What's a tracker, uh, technical aspect? We uh, we had like how to hire and build and what's looking for eyes from James for Ellswick, for example. So we just wanted to cover all aspects. So everyone who's coming to the, who's watching, who's applying for a free ticket can be like, hey, this day is for me. I can learn something from this speech because you, it's, in the end, you, I'll, I'll just dive a little bit more deep into that. Um, like, it, it's all about who you identify with, right? Because in, in the end, it's like, you're going to look for someone where you're like, hey, I look, I, I think I look like this person. And you're going to listen to this person so much more than anyone else. It's the same, for example, let's say I'm, I'm, a, I'm an affiliate, starting affiliate, and everyone on your following space or on next foot following base or on James from Ellswick or Oliver Canyon, everyone has their own identity and everyone, uh, every one of their following feels that they have identified the most with this person. That's why they listen to them. That's why they, they follow them. And that's why they implement their strategies. So it's, it's the same with all the online events, the offline events. What I said, you, we, had, we let in CEOs, we let in and founders, we let in and account, account managers, affiliate managers, because in the end, you're going to look for someone where you feel identified with, but you're also going to look a step further who you look up to and who you can learn most from. So uh, and that's what we wanted to do with this conference. We wanted to be like, hey, first identify, but also you want to go a step further. I know, for example, on, on day five, we had Bilal Asad, which we went super good down into funnel building, which which tells you how to build your exact funnel. So we, we had something for everyone, you know, how to start off, uh, workshop for you guys where you did super good showed people how to launch a campaign and, and, and we need this you know and, and the audience needs this and the, the audience can be like hey, I can learn from A to Z within one week I'm not saying that you're going to be an expert but within one week within five and we had a couple guys man they're messaging me in private hey man thank you so much this and, and I learned so much in this week, and I always wanted to travel to conferences, and I've never been able to. And you, like you gave us a head start, and some people already taking us like in the speakers, which I think is, is super cool. And you also, and all those guys who I just named, they're getting messages. And I know this also happens at conferences, but you know, conferences it's expensive, you know. And also, like, I know we can pay it, but it's going to cost you at least two k, two k USD to go there. Yeah. I mean, especially and, online and the hotels, and then you're you're spending money for your food and the parties, the networking, like probably definitely more than two k for sure. I know, but I know, but that's if you if you calculate the bare minimum, okay, the bare minimum could be super cheap, like fifty hundred dollars, like, and then you're in a cheap hotel uh, to a stopover flight to anywhere in the world. You're you're buying a ticket, and you're not going out partying or going crazy, which is fine, you know. Don't get me wrong, I agree, but but. I, I, I basically, like, I'm Arab and I know I know a lot of people in the Middle East, North, North Africa and I, I also, when I travel there, I always try to help people there and everyone's like, I always want to travel to these conferences and then there was Arab Affiliate Summit which is super well. I know the guys also have done a terrific job in organizing 
for a lower budget and bringing top A game speakers. But it's still hard for all these people to really find a very good place. That's why I was like, hey man, the Virtual Summit now is the perfect time. We built a good name with the Philip Business Club. And it's been it's a brand now. Everywhere, everywhere we go now with the cards, you know, we're present there. It, even if it's a small event or a big event, like last year Barcelona doing every World Conference with like 12, 300 yeah. people, you know? Yeah, no, and, yeah. And sometimes we do it for 100 people, but we want to be present there. And also because we're not organizing conferences, we're not a threat to any conference out there. We just actually want to make the conference better by people remembering the conference better. Be like, hey, I had so such a good day at the conference. And I also went to Aki's event, to ABC. And we, and together combined, it's perfect. And um, I think it's a good mix of, of best of both worlds. And uh, you do a beer at our events, you made a good connection to me at fun after going party. But with the virtual things going more virtual, I do believe, it, I, I think, first of all, the pie is big enough for everyone. There's no, always pie is huge for everybody. Like I mean, like like just going back like a little bit, like um, like with all these speakers uh, hitting me up, and even just uh, viewers, networks, new networks, and new advertisers messaging me from your event from AVS, and they're like, "Oh man, dude, that's what I needed. That's some new stuff." People are hitting me up about my my self-made tools, like my calculator that I've, I've showed off. All right, and now I'm like, "Oh, the people ask for this, I'll just give it to them. I'll I'll make it part of the Avengers group or or whatnot." Right. But it was so crazy how busy I was last week for not being at a conference. Like it was almost me being busy as if I was at the conference. Right. Just because there's so many messages, so many emails. People were finding me on, on Instagram. Um, definitely my site rose up a, a bit. Uh, we had some new registrations on Adventures. People were messaging me on Telegram, Facebook. So I was kind of surprised how busy I was without physically not being in a conference right and that's the crazy reach that you guys i guess had right with uh with i guess very little uh advertising did you guys buy any ads or was it just more word of mouth for each uh, it was it definitely we have like our following the, the email list we have so we definitely lasted some emails there we did some ads uh i think we only spent like fifteen hundred dollars then the ad account got banned use a different one it got also banned and we're like Man, it's the worst timing ever. Two ad accounts bad, you know, in one week. And we're like, and I was like, at one moment, shit, man. And this first thing happened Thursday before the conference. So on Sunday, we started. And I, and, and I went on, it was on Wednesday. And on Wednesday, we were like pumping up the budget. Unless we had someone else doing the media buying. And it was like, okay, let's just spend money. This is cool, this is cool. You know, signups coming in, that's good. Bam, bad. And I was like, and then on Thursday, the second one. He's like, I'll do that of mine. And then we went out from, from Roman's one. But we, we saw, like, we couldn't spend as much in the last few days as we wanted to. And that, at one moment, we were just like, you know what, let's just focus. I don't want to be focusing too much on, on this right now. So that's why, actually, the, it's funny because the 60 to 90 days plan we initially had, uh, one of my guys said, the last month is just for media buying. I said, no, no, we're going to do it. So we, we did see some, I think, less signups than we wanted. Yeah, uh, but that's why you, you take the last thirty days just for complete go nuts of media buying, you know. And uh, anyway, man, we are gonna do our next summit. Uh, we we planned it, I think, now for seventh of September uh, with Rowan. We're gonna launch it actually this, this week. So it, it's for us. It's gonna be. It's, if we have more than enough time right now. We're gonna change a few things in the program. Uh, we're gonna break things down a little bit more. We're going to add, put like a more networking aspect towards it also. Uh, we're going to make it more attractive for companies and for the audience to network with each other. Well, I mean, this is more like a, a like proof of concept for your sponsors and for anybody that wants to like, hey, this is worth it, right? Because um, I know like a bunch of ad network, when they reached out to me, they are like, dude, this is what we have. They're trying to get the feel of... Um, return i guess for just viewing your your conference and seeing what what they're, they're getting feedback the only difference is that their the advertisers or the networks are basically talking to me instead of talking to the people that are actually watching right so whereas when you're at a conference people that are let's say coming to my speaking session they're actually seeing thousands or 500 people in the audience which they can network with right where it's a little bit harder i guess to do it online um i mean if you had that virtual chat and you know like if you made it a little bit more virtual do you think things would change like what do you think 
you would adjust for your next event in September? De definitely, definitely a chat aspect. Um, also, maybe more go more internally uh, with with our platform. We're also going to launch, you know, with the Business Club, doing more stuff inside the platform itself. Probably we haven't figured out yet, but uh, since we have the platform ready, I was also Zoom integrations, Web Jam integration. Uh, it's super easy because everyone makes a profile, right? So you can we can basically see who can watch the video, who watch the video. Uh, and we can we can pass this if if, if you give consent right to you you can give this uh, like uh, if you want to get in touch with uh, with, uh, with an affiliate network for example we can be like hey we know that Ian has watched this this session for example or let's say I watch your session okay. and I give consent for the affiliate network to get in touch with you then we can be like hey Aki has watched Ian's session so uh, let's say uh, network X can be can can in, can get in touch with you this would make it on a networking side much better and the quality is better because we on the platform have a lot of people where people have filled out their profile from a picture, we know where they're based, what verticals they run, on which traffic sources. And then it's I think you 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 go a little bit more deep because I just like to dive a little bit more deeper and stuff eventually. Like uh, and it, people, you know that's what we do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what we love, right? So yeah. it, it's I think also but to have the best possible way for people to network on the platform, but also for the audience to get in touch with the companies and for the companies to get in touch with the audience. Because now that's one of the mistakes. I wouldn't call it a mistake, but like a learning lesson for us. We, we hadn't figured out how the companies can really get in touch with the people that watch. Yeah. And we haven't figured out a good proper way for the audience to get in, in touch with the companies. And it's to be engaged with the speakers. Yeah, um, we, we thought about Slido, we thought about chat next to it, and these other things. You have a lot of output. but uh, still, I can say people, as you say, uh, people are afraid to ask stupid questions. Whereas nothing is stupid, and, and people don't care to answer these questions, as, especially speakers. But people are still afraid since their identity is, is basic. So we, we're thinking of. Maybe putting like an anonymous chat on the front end, but on the back end, we can see who is who, or at least the speakers can maybe see, because you don't want to, for example, let's say I'm a newbie, and I ask you, I ask you like an open, a stupid question, yeah? uh, and I'll be like, yeah, everyone, everyone knows my name, everyone knows my Facebook account, everyone, and we thought first, hey, having a Facebook chat implementation, everyone's already on Facebook, like we're like, oh, yeah, this is it, right? But it, it shows that our thoughts from the whole team was wrong, and and we need to figure something else yeah. how to how to make this better and then we have this other girl on our team julia who was very active in the chat She's like we need to do a telegram so after two days only we switched so actually after the workshops because we were like so confident people were going to react hundreds of messages under the workshops right like yeah. i was convinced like 100 percent not there's there's no discussion <laughs> Everyone loves Ian. Everyone loves. Everyone knows Savannah Silva. They're gonna watch it. Everyone's gonna comment. Like I was so convinced, bro. It's insane. Yeah. And no. We saw when I do lives. When I do live training, sometimes on my group, nobody really asks. People just watch and consume information. Everybody, like the whole world, is just consumers. Whether it be products or information, and a lot of people, I think, uh, they just want to understand, right? I think the people that only ask are the ones that like, oh, I've done this and I made this mistake, then I'll ask. But for somebody just starting, I think they're just there to understand and consume, which is, which is, which I've learned in the past. Like I thought it would be like, yo, know, people are just gonna ask questions like you're, you're saying, right? But in the end, I think they're just more curious, right? What is pop, yeah. right? Who is yeah. Ian? What is native, right? What is all that? So it's, it's very, it's, it's, it's like uh, it's sad sometimes, but it's also exciting because you're like, oh, I know I'm gonna get all these comments, but then you don't get any comments. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's like it's like with, with it, it's the dopamine, right? With, with Instagram, you're looking for this like, and I was like, oh yeah, yeah. what the fuck's happening? What? And but it, it it showed like I think it's a, it's a good learning lesson for all of us because nothing is hundred percent so And I always say to the team, everyone's right or wrong. I can be right. I can be wrong. Like. I've been in the industry longer enough, but it doesn't mean I'm right, you know? I think that yeah. my, my, my general knowledge is way better. I understand the industry way better. So actually, my, my, I have a bigger chance of being right. That's what I always say. 
but it doesn't mean I'm right. And yeah, that's what I told Nobody is a 100% per- perfectionist, right? Everybody has yeah. to ex- has a 100% experience of their own views, but doesn't mean that it will always be implemented in the, in the right way, right? So that's how people should think about it, you know? But yeah, I mean, that's great that you have this uh, platform now, ABS and ABC being integrated. I think the networking part for sure um, needs to be adjusted and what you're saying i think it's it's going to be will it be ready for september uh yeah i, w- I, w- I would say 100 percent. i'm never saying 100 percent now after, after this last time 100 percent. i was still convinced bro uh look like we're just finding new ways we just like finished the, the conference two days ago we're wrapping everything up uh starting monday uh we're going to launch a new uh new uh, we're going to go online with the new summit and uh, I, I think we're gonna learn. We're gonna again learn along the way and look into different options and, and what can be the best way of integrating a live chat and also to increase the audience and the, the engagement from the audience. I mean, and I think this is uh, this is definitely something we can still learn from. I think that's something every every crowd is also gonna look into. I, I still believe uh, other companies are eventually gonna do something virtual. I know. Affiliate Summit and, and European Summit, they are, are a little bit postponing still right now, but also looking into it. Uh, probably SCM, uh, the Affiliate World Conference, they're definitely going to do something online. Uh, they have a big, good following. Um, and AVN is already like the other dating industry. Uh, conference is also moving on to virtual. So again, I don't, I don't think it's going to be a replacement because once travels, uh, probably next year, when you cannot travel again, everyone, I know everyone's very optimistic about this year. I don't see us traveling this year to to a lot of countries. I think maybe Europe by by car or something like that. Borders are easy to cross, so it's easier for Philippines to travel. But like it's under control here and in Scandinavia. But the US is still man. There's no end basically. There's no end light at the end of the tunnel. So. I'm not going to go to Vegas to a show or to New York show, right? So, yeah. And Bangkok, if it's if it's possible, yeah, I think definitely people from the region will go. But it's hard for people from all over the world to come to one place. Yeah, and then everyone in place right now, you know. So that's the craziest part. And I know, I mean, it's crazy to say this, but I think it will last till into next year, right? Um, especially now in the U.S., just because. They're loosening um, stay-at-home guidelines and and all that, which is making it, which might make everything more worse, if anything. But it's mm-hmm. I don't know. I have, I have no clue what's going on for the next future unless the vaccine comes out. But with conferences, I know it will be definitely limited. People are definitely thinking how to do stuff virtual, how to network, how to make more cash. Ad spend is definitely on the uh, on the low side of things, which is makes it better for us. But it's gonna be. It's going to be like a new world this year, technically, you know, and I think the virtual summit is something that people need to, it's a, it's a place for, for everyone to get away, right, to, for an hour or, or whatnot, right, but now it's just how to, how to get the interaction going, how to get uh, the best out of it, you know, like, like, again, like, last week, I was just getting hit up, but I was just like, there was nothing scheduled, so I was, think, I was doing one thing on Telegram, then my thought would go to a Facebook message, so then, like, oh, was I talking to this person? Did somebody needed me on Instagram? So I'm like going back and forth, right? So there's this issue of like, yeah. oh, I was talking to a key, but then I had to talk to Roman. What was Roman talking about, right? <laughs> so that, that's, the, that's the issue that I've, I've been having right now, right? So yeah, you see, that will come it's, up. It's, it's definitely people, I think the main issue also we had is your... Look, you're fighting with everyone's attention span, right? Uh, look, people are at home with the spouses. They they have their whole their their normal work day, uh, where they have to finish to I mean finish their normal work tasks, and then they have they need to give time to their spouses, uh, to their children. They want to watch Netflix. They want to watch porn. Whatever you know, everyone's like you're fighting with all these different companies, right? For their for their time, right? And, and that's the hardest thing about the virtual conference. That's why we also decided. We're gonna let it go through the whole weekend for free, so people can just watch it for free and be like, "Hey, man, I'm I'm already busy with so much stuff." And and the thing is, we just want to put good stuff out there, and we we really want people to be able to learn something and be like, "Hey, man, next time I'm definitely gonna come back." Because 
that's that's the whole philosophy with all the ABC events. Again, when we started, we want people to come back not one time, but two times, three times, four times. Like as long as they're 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 having something valuable from it, we want people to come back. And sometimes we have people coming back just for fun. Uh, I just want to see my old friend, my buddies on the big beer, get big fuck. That's fine, you know. But yeah, of course, uh, support is necessary, you know. So yeah, it is, yeah, and, and that's the same. The same idea came, came. The same plus comes with this. Put good stuff out there and and build up audience, build up following, and come back. And I think it's actually I learned it from Gary V. He's like, just give so much stuff away for free first, you know. Just give, give, just give until you basically be like, man, I, I can't give away anymore. Like he's like, I, I remember he had this video. It's like it makes so much sense. That's why all the our events were free for the people to attend. Just come, get so much things out there which you want, and this is what we put, want to put out there. Like the, the same with online and offline, just give as much connections with offline events and online with knowledge. And I mean, I, I, I'm definitely looking forward for all other conferences to come out with 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 also something virtual. I think we can all learn from all each other. I know a lot of people have been watching our summit. I've seen like all the big conferences; they signed up with tons of people. Obviously, they're gonna watch and see how we're gonna do it. We, we really f- focused on uh, just putting the webinar idea, what you said, like to get back uh, to the point, because we just wanted to make things easy. People, it's easy to consume, it's easy to put a good following. And from there, uh, we, we also learned. So we're going to move, like, how can we make things better? And I had a call with Roman today, like, hey, man, this is an hour long. We're just like, hey, what what could have been done better? Of course. What could have you know, and we we're just going to think about it tomorrow. We're going to talk about with the team, whatever, what everyone thinks, what, what could be done better. Also with engagement, with, with the plan, with media, band, like everything around it. Right? So every aspect we're going to be like, hey, tech with it. We're just going to get ready for next for the next summit. Uh, and, and again, we just want good, to good stuff out there. Yeah, that's good, man. That's that's awesome. So I want to thank you for discussing this, you know, congratulations as well, because I've seen a couple other virtual summits and, there, I mean, it's, I guess it's based on the audience, too. Like, um, there was an ad comp, Outbrains having their mini webinars, you know. there A lot of people are doing this webinar video style, but it doesn't, no one really has felt the, or I have never felt a situation where it feels like I'm at a conference or with a networking side, um, maybe besides yours, just because i just been getting hit up, right? But the thing is, I wasn't hitting up people, right? So my networking on my side was, was difficult. People now working towards me just because I guess all even all the speakers and you yourself have probably been getting a lot of messages. So I think that's it's a, it was one sided for sure, right? But um, I want to thank you for having this discussion. Congrats on AVS and and all that, Thanks. right? Uh, looking forward for the next one. And uh, for everyone out there, um, you will see his uh, affiliate virtual summit if you go to affiliate affiliate virtual summit dot com um how much is it right now right now for the weekend well it's going to be this will be put out probably tomorrow so they won't be able to see it but uh yeah how much is the, is the pass or the unlimited uh, views so the, the all access pass is now 97 dollars actually for 100 bucks you have 33 hours plus of good content walking you from a to z like from beginner level to advanced stuff uh, out there and you can just consume it whenever you want, wherever you want, at which, which place you want. And you have our team actually who will support you and answer all your questions within 24 hours. So that's, uh, it's also good. That's awesome. Yeah. Cause you went from affiliate marketing, campaign management, hiring people, Facebook ads, you even went into some e-commerce stuff as well. And, and, uh, especially with Zach with Amazon. So that's, uh, you had a very good cluster of audience just because, Affiliate marketing is just marketing online, technically, and every aspect of online marketing that it, it touches every aspect of online marketing is what I meant to say, right? From Amazon to hiring to creating an ad agency to doing Facebook ads and all that stuff. So, Aki, thank you again for having you, uh, or thank you for joining me on this uh, conference and podcast for Ad Vendors, and I uh, hope looking forward for your next event in uh, September. So. Yeah, and then, uh, thank you also for putting this out there. I know you're doing a very good job with Adventures, uh, Gert following, and you're a very respectable person. I love you so much as a, as a brother. I hope to see you again soon. And uh, <laughs> no, but but thank you also for having me, man. And uh, continue with, your, with what you're doing, man. You're doing a good job, and you're putting good stuff out there. So let's continue rocking. 
Of course, of course, all the time, man. Appreciate it. Take care.